cameras on me, yeah, yeah. Put them on me, put the cameras on me, yeah, yeah. Put them on me, put the cameras on me, yeah, yeah. Put them on me, put the cameras on me, yeah. Hello, everybody. Live from Koreatown, it is the Brothers Miller with a special guest, King Gabe Rosado, ladies and gentlemen. Live in the Ozone. You're here with us, and we're about to put it down. This is the Ozone Podcast. Gabe, how you feeling? Good, man. I know you're flying high. I'm I know I'm it's flying eagles. I'm feeling real good. Yeah, yeah, man. My eagles finally made it to the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel good, man. I'm putting money on this one. I don't even bet. Is that right? Oh, really? You got to do one. it. I got to put money on this What are you going to do? You're from Philly. Yeah. This is one of Philly's finest, ladies and gentlemen. T, how you feeling? I'm feeling great. Yeah? Especially since we got a Philly fan in the house. Uh, yeah. Anybody that's anti-Patriots, I'm with them. <laughs> Let's roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a lot to talk about here. Today, we want to cover a few things. Major League Baseball is heating up. You know, it's our favorite sport. We had a big batch this weekend in boxing, and that's where we want to start. Now, I saw you on Twitter, Gabe, talking, and you you kept it 100. <laughs> because Danny Garcia, an, another fellow Philly fighter, yeah, yeah. actually called out Earl Spence. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time since anybody called out strap season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, for real. And Danny went out there and said that he's ready to chunk him. Yeah, yeah. Now, no, man, what's your take on that? I mean, that's just that Philly mentality, man. You know what I'm saying? Just gunning for the top and just, you know, daring to be great. I mean, you come, I mean, Philadelphia is so rugged. Yeah, I mean, I it's, the movie it's, it, yeah, man, it's so rugged, bro, that like, you know, you make it out of Philly, man, you just, you can make it out of anywhere, you, you know what I mean? You definitely ain't scared to step into the square oh, circle. No, definitely, bro, definitely. So, well, I want to start off just giving you love because right, thanks, honestly, respect because you are a guy who has never played politics in boxing. Yeah, man. And, and that doesn't go far enough nowadays. Yeah, man. We talk about it a lot here because a couple topics we want to cover with you, but one of the things, big thing is, we talk about it all the time. There's no reason that boxers shouldn't have a union. There's oh, yeah. no reason that fighters shouldn't, all all combat fighters. Yeah, yeah. You guys need a union, man. You see guys now, I mean, I I, I do my little training and whatnot at gyms. I train down at Fifth Street, down in uh, in, in uh, Miami. I train out here. I, I You know, I, you see guys mumbling around the gym after yeah, yeah. they've re- been retired. yeah. And there's nobody to help them. Exactly. And it, you know, those, I, those you are know, guys that just wasn't taken care of, and I mean, they, you know, fought past their prime. Right. Some, you know, some of them got, you know, hooked on drugs and right. whatever the case may be. But you know, man, I got a, I got a pretty good team, you know. So oh no no no, I, I think yeah, you're solid yeah, gold. Yeah yeah, I got a pretty good team. It's important to have a, a good team behind you and just have a goal for like, you know, when you want to stop and have yourself set up for retirement. You know what I'm saying? So. You know, if you if you do that for yourself, then, you know, I think you have a pretty healthy career, you know? Yeah, for boxing, though, it's a young man's sport. And so oh, yeah. most of the time you guys get started so early. Yeah. You know, really, how old, how old were you when I you actually started? started late, man. I'm a late bloomer, man. I, Is that I, right? I, I, yeah. Were well, you blessed? I started boxing at 18. Yeah. Oh, so wow. I, I, it's amazing that I, you're I, as good as you yeah. are. I walked into the boxing gym with a basketball and, and, the, and the dude, <laughs> and the dude I, I walked in. I mean, I was just running ball. I said, man, I want to box. And then uh, the the guy running the gym was like, "Man, you too old, man. Sick the basketball." So I walked off. And then the dude that trains me now, Billy Briscoe, he ran behind me in the street. He was like, "Man, if you serious, come tomorrow." And I came, and we did eleven amateur fights. And a year later, at nineteen, I turned pro. Wow! Yeah, wow! Just like that, man. So I pretty much was learning on the job. I only had eleven amateur fights. I went open. So the amateurs is like, when you're eighteen, eighteen and up, you can you go open. So like at my fifth fight, I fought Mean Joe Green, who had 350 amateur fights. Wow. And that's that's the competition I was fighting in the wow. amateurs, you know, top guys. And, you know, I told Bill, I said, you know what, Bill, we're not getting paid, man. Let's go pro. You know, this hurts, man. Let's get some paper yeah, at least, you know. So that's how, you know, and I, I had to work my way, man. I had to work my way. It was tough, man. I worked graveyard shift at Home Depot, and I put water mains, on, you know, underground. And, man, it was tough, man. But little by little, I worked my way in the rankings. I'm going nice. to tell you the truth, though. I think that's why people love you because oh, yeah. the following Thanks, that you have is is committed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? The it's people, legit, they legit. get for real. Yeah, they legit. And they, they really love you because they can feel how real you are. <laughs> yeah. Every now and then I get a hater that pops off, but I don't even got to say nothing because they, like, jump they jump <laughs> they on jump them. them. They jump on them. You got to say it's cool, huh? Your they crew is real. He got his they own beat. Uh-huh. They, they, <laughs> they on them. So I don't even got to say, yeah. say nothing, man. They on them. So, wow. Yeah, it's love. See, that's great, man. That, yeah. For everybody that they know, for, so they know, you know what? Gabe is a good person. I met Gabe at church. That's actually yeah. how we ended up here yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, He's yeah. a good dude. 
and yeah. I prayed with him and I've rooted for him yeah. and I, I thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it, bro. But I really do. I mean that what I say, man. Yeah, you yeah. haven't played politics in yeah. the, in the sport. And nowadays, we talk about it all the time. You know, the old adage in boxing is the only people that are undefeated just haven't fought enough people yet. Exactly. That's just all it is to it. Exactly. But nowadays with the stables, and it seems as though you've gone in and out of various of the big stables in yeah, the boxing. Yeah. yeah. Everyone's so protective mm-hmm. of their undefeated record or <laughs> whatever it is yeah. that us as the fans, we really yeah. get cheated. It, it sucks, man. It's the it's the Mayweather effect. Hundred percent. And here's the thing: it's only one Mayweather. It worked for Mayweather, but people forget who Mayweather fought coming up. He, he was fought, a monster. He in fought Sean, Sean Bay Mitchell, uh, Chop Chop Courtley, Manfredo. These were guys that were beasts, and he beasts. was he was he was destroying these guys. When he finally got his break and he fought Oscar, is when he became Money May. A hundred percent. And I was that was at that was at thirty years old yep. when he fought I was Oscar. At that fight. That's the first so big fight I ever went to. He paid his dues, and so. You know, these cats coming up, they want to be Floyd so bad, but they forgot what Floyd did. Floyd's great for a reason. He had to earn that. He earned that. And I mean, so I think that's the problem, you know. But if you look at the time where, like, you know, Duran beat Leonard. Oh, man. And then, just talking about, and then Leonard, about it. And then Leonard beat Hearns. But then Hearns beat Duran. And then and, Marvin Hagler went and, and acted. A, yeah, <laughs> just went and walked through saying? them. And all these dudes fought each other, and none of them are undefeated, but they're all legends. All legends. They're all, all legends. legends. You don't. You and don't, they're the measuring stick. You don't look at Duran and go, "He got knocked out by by Hearns." Nah, you, you, you would never say a, that. You think about He's a legend. A warrior. Yeah, you think about a legend. Yeah. But I think a lot of it got to do too with the commentating. I hate the commentating sometimes. Sometimes they're I'm involved like, with the stables. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I talk about it all the time as well. I tell yeah. people, turn that off and yeah. watch the fight. It sucks, man. It's like you know what really pissed me off when. Um, when chocolate, when chocolatito got knocked out, and, and everybody took, took jumped off the, and it was like, they're you know, for everything that chocolatitos accomplished, they're gonna remember him for this fight, and it right. was like, whoa, that's it's unbelievable. Like, you know, when you put that bug in in the fans' ears, Don't you then that seed? yeah, you planted a seed yeah. that maybe a fan, you know, what I'm saying, but I just find that I just find that where it's like, damn, y'all was praising them. Def- Ten minutes ago, yeah, y'all was praising him. He was the best. He was the best thing. And then all of a sudden, he takes an L, and it's like it's over. It just lets you know who's with you and who's not, you yeah. know. Because honestly, same thing happened. We talked about it. Same thing happened with Manny Pacquiao devoted his life to Christ because mm-hmm. when he was out there wilding, yeah. he was the world's he was darling. Man. He was the yeah. man. Like they yeah. loved him. Honestly, they really yeah, yeah, loved yeah. him. And then yeah. he jumped in and, there with Timothy Bradley and, and beat the, <laughs> beat the snot out of him. And then, but then everybody tried to act like he didn't. Yeah, like yeah. it was like, and during during the fight, the commentation was as though we actually, and I, actually, I really like Max Kellerman. We we jammed Max up at an yeah. HBO function about that, Sad. and he was like, "Well, you know what? They, you know, people sit on different sides when you watch the fight." He was, he was actually really cool about it. I can't front yeah. at all. And uh, but you know, this thing with the stables, the fans get cheated. It bothers me, yeah. and I and and in general, the theme right now is getting cheated in sports. Yeah, because. We can talk about the game. The Eagles won that game. But what I can tell you come a week and a half from now, the Eagles don't only have to beat the Patriots. The Mm -hmm. Eagles got to beat the league as well as the Patriots. And everybody knows that. Everybody except Patriot fans. And Patriot fans act like it's cool Mm -hmm. because it's working for them. (laughs) You know what I mean? Now, and that takes me back to May of last year Mm -hmm. because I personally felt like you got cheated when you skipped the pond and went and fought Martin Murray. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, made exactly. sure to rewatch the fight again to make yeah, sure yeah. that I wasn't bugging. Yeah, and you know, everybody, this game is so dirty. And he's he's now fighting for the world title. How about that? Can Which is it? crazy. You know what I'm it's saying? It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see him do anything that was overly impressive in that fought, fight. He actually fought scary to me. He fought like he he, he fought he in fought, reverse. He fought like he didn't want to exchange. Most of his shots were like get away from me type shots. He was moving in reverse. Yeah. You definitely the Jing Ren, the blah, 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 the ring generalship was yeah. definitely you. Yeah. Couple of times he caught you. Yeah, but that's a part. Just like yeah. you said in the after thing. Like He's he a get, professional. He get paid too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He but you know, his was it was like one to three because I would throw combinations. I throw. Great body shots. Yep. But, you know, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things, man, where is it, it sucks. The politics of boxing, man. It really sucks. And I think at the end of the day, you know, the fan, like the promoters and the, and the powers that be, they have their own agenda, but they don't pay attention to the fans. And it's like, you know, you know, they force feed us guys that really 100%. the fans don't are not interested in. You right. know what I'm saying? But, you know, the fans love guys like Gotti. Because when yeah. it was a draw, you was getting your money's worth. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And there's there's plenty of fighters like that. 
But you know, they want that. Uh, they want to promote that guy like. Like you know, they want to do that Floyd Mayweather thing all over again. Mm-hmm. Like Oscar, he hates on he hates on Floyd and so then much. He calls out he tries Conor to, McGregor. He tries for to fight. do he tries to do any everything that that Floyd does. You know what I'm right. saying? He's calling out Conor, but he said, "Oh, this is a ho- horrible for boxing. Yeah, this Don't is terrible this for boxing." All of a sudden, you got a little left in the tank to, <laughs> yeah, to tighten him yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, you know what I mean, it's pretty ridiculous, man. I agree. I mean, personally, I mean, I'm really interested in in what the next step is for you there because. Yeah. You've been the guy several times on the other side of that, and yeah. you just need opportunity. Yeah. Sometimes the ball bounces your way, sometimes it doesn't, yeah. but yeah, you're yeah. still in the game. And yeah. from what I've seen with the other fighters and everything, everybody respects you. Yeah. That goes a long way. Sure. But as I know from my business uh, and, and from, from watching sports my whole life, politics are everywhere. Yeah, you know what I mean. Oh, and, definitely. And, and everybody, yeah. that was a big win. The last fight against the, the Glenn was a yeah, big. Yeah, that was yeah, a big yeah. win. Yeah, yeah. Because it puts you back in a position, especially in spectacular fashion. Yeah, yeah. Puts you back in a position where people are like, "Oh, you know what? Maybe we need to give him another." I really think uh, uh, give him another shot. I really feel like because you were willing to take the fights and nobody wanted to fight. Yeah. You fought Triple G when did nobody want to fight yeah. Triple G? I gave up my number one ranking at one fifty four. I wasn't even a middleweight. And so you moved him. That was the first. That my was my number first. one ranking to go fight Triple G. You know what I'm saying? And you know, he, here's the thing: my my schedule was crazy. Right. So when you look at it, it was Triple G. Then it was J Love, which was a yep. robbery. Then it was Kid Chocolate, which was a horrible stoppage. Then it was uh, Charlo. Then it was Brian Vera on knocked out. And then it was Lemieux. And then it was Curtis Stevens. These are Everybody's all top, on these your are all, resume. These wow. are all top ten, but these are back to back. This is not. This is There's not. There's no like, breaking. This between is not them. Triple G and then Cherry Pick yeah, and then yeah, yeah, right. No, this is this is top ten level guys. Where uh, honest to God, like Canelo couldn't survive that that type of schedule. Uh, no, no, you you, you no. mean you're talking to the, trust yeah. me? We 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 agree. <laughs> yeah. So my thing. Oh, they well, you know, Canelo. They gave him Khan. When they were supposed to give me that fight, I fought Joshua Clady after my Joshua Clady when I was supposed to fight Canelo. Canelo, yeah. They Golden Boy told me we're ninety percent there, Gabe. Next thing you know, I find out on Instagram he's fighting Khan. I find out on Instagram he's fighting Khan. I go, this is ridiculous. At forty seven, who who was really yeah. forty seven. He went up and fought at 54, yeah. and that didn't work out for him. Well, well, and he was putting tips on Canelo until oh, yeah, he yeah. got caught. Yeah, you know, so, you know, uh, Canelo fought Josecito Lopez and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, it was, it was those fights where you're supposed to look spectacular, and he fight a tough fight, and you look spectacular. But, you know, he let, let's keep it real. He waited for Triple G to slow down. And he yeah. still lost that fight. I don't care what nobody yeah, says. Still, he, still, he, 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 still, yeah. Yeah, he still lost that fight. So, And the, the reason I'm making these points is because I'm with Golden Boy. Right. You know what I'm saying? And, and they listen. They'll and, hear. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm with Golden Boy. And it's like, you know, they want to, you know, they gave me a hard route, which is cool because, you know, I dare to be great. I wanted to take these fights. You know what I'm saying? No one, no one forced right, me to take no, these fights. Right, you didn't say no. Yeah, exactly. But it's just like, you know what I mean? It's just like it is a is a is a, um, a, a art in matchmaking. You know and I'm saying there's a strategy behind it. You know and I'm saying so it's just it is what it is though. And then when you're a good fighter, a lot of times it's, it's hard to you know to get fights. Oh yeah, you know yeah yeah. Most of these guys when they go and handpick these fights, they they don't want the competition. It seems like you're the type of fighter that you know you you look forward to the yeah. competition. I think that's why the fans. I think that's why the fans like respect I'm telling me. You. And, uh, I'm telling you and you know rock with me. But, you know, it's, at this point, like, in my career, like, I'm 32 years old and I'm smarter. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'm, I live a much healthier lifestyle. Right. You know, so. Physically, you filled out. Yeah, I feel. Like, if you, even if you look at you physically in yeah. the in those fights, in that, that strip back to back to yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, It looked like you should have still been fighting 54. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly, exactly. Because when I went to fight Triple G, it was real difficult for me to get back to 54 because nobody... Nobody went to fight me at 54. It was like, oh, Gabe's gone. Let's, like, let's avoid him. So I kind of had to stick at 60 till I filled out eventually. Right. I mean, so, but yeah, it's uh, at this point, it's just like, you know, being smart, making the right moves, the right fights. No doubt. And putting myself in position to, you know, get myself back on top. I still believe I could I could be a world champion and, and beat the top guys, but it's a strategy and how you do it. You what know? I'm telling you is that yeah, if you yeah. don't believe it, then you might as well oh, yeah, pick yeah, up the yeah. mic with me. Oh, because exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, if you don't believe it, then oh, yeah. this ain't the thing to do. Yeah, no, definitely. You don't play man. boxing, oh, Jack. You don't, you don't play boxing, not at all, man. Yeah, wow. That's great. And now tell me, in analyzing that fight, I'm assuming you saw the Earl Spence fight. Yeah, man, he's, he's good, man. Yeah, that yeah. kid has the potential to be great. 
the, 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 I like Earl Spence. He reminds me a lot of like Leonard Hearn. I agree. He's he just, wants like, reminds you Leonard. He, he wants to fight. I don't. I feel like he gets hit too much. To remind me of Sugar Ray. Yeah, but he's not the flash and dash he, that Sugar was. Yeah, he he brings the fight. Uh, you to know. You. you know why I say Sugar Ray? Why? Because when Sugar Ray got nasty, that's how he fought. Sugar Ray, when when he when he banged with you, yeah, you know, he was mean. He, would, he like, was mean. Yeah, he was staying later in the, in the fight. With you. He was staying. The, well, that's why he lost to Duran the first time because yeah. he wanted to be a mo- he wanted to be uh, macho. Yeah, in that right. Fight. It wasn't the right. And then, move. you know, the rematch. He said, "I'm gonna be smart. I'm I'm a boxing move." Yeah. But you know, he banged with Duran the first time. Sure did. You know, but when. You know, he reminds me a lot of Sugar Ray when he sits down in the pocket. And, you know, he's smart. And he's willing to trade. He's smart. He uses his angle, his angles. I mean, he got charisma. Like, I mean, I think he's the full package. I think I so, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I really do, too. And I think that everybody else that's holding the title out there has to, <laughs> needs to be, has been put on notice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because no the fans know. Yeah. And I love one time. I've, I've met him <laughs> at several fights. I got nothing but love for Keith. And Keith tweeted something about hey wait your turn or something like that and the fans jumped on him like hey you better wait your turn this dude got the, the yeah. he went overseas and grabbed the title and now he just won another spectacular fight yeah. and while you're healing up you better be ready when it's go right. time yeah yeah he made lamont look bad he made lamont look bad and lamont's yeah. a good fighter man yeah, i like lamont beating Lamont's solid but he's yeah he's solid I, I predicted i said that's how that fight was going to turn out really? just because, be a stoppage. just because lamont's solid but I mean, you just could see that hunger in Spence. Yeah. And he wants to mix it up again immediately. Wa- yeah, yeah. He wants to, like, he, he's saying, I want to fight three times a year. That's something else that's been lost. We talk about it all the time. The even round, the idea that guys fight maybe two times a year. Yeah. And the fact that fights went from 15 rounds to 12 rounds, which is an even number of rounds. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. When I said the even round, I mean even round scoring. Yeah, yeah. These are things that have been lost that, in my opinion, hurt the game. Mm-hmm. Because some rounds guys do the same amount of stuff. Sometimes yeah. it is an even round. Yeah, yeah. And forcing judges to choose only puts them in well, a position. Well, the thing is, the judges it is weird. Judges don't use the point system like properly because you can score a ten ten round. I'm saying if a, if a round goes even, you can score a ten ten. I, I you never see it now. Yeah, you never see it. It's yeah, always yeah. a choice, and usually, just like there was in your Martin Murray fight, yeah. there's one judge who is so huh. deep into the pockets of whatever promoter that he's in that <laughs> yeah. it's a, it, I mean, listen, they had, one, somebody one had to fight one four. Come on, man. Somebody, they had to fight. The official scores were 114, 114, 116, 112, and 119, 109. <laughs> listen, what, what fight did you th- watch? That was the last, that was the last scorecard was the 119, 109. When they said that, I said, man, that's so wide. It got to be me. <laughs> <what you> <laughs> I said, oh, that's me. That's got to be me. <laughs> and and when, when they say Martin Murray, I go, oh, man. Come on, man. It's ridiculous, bro. Come on, man. It's just ridiculous. But, you know, it's just, it's horrible, man. It's horrible. The point systems don't, it's, it's just not used properly. It's like sometimes there's a round where a guy beats a guy so decisively that it doesn't have to be scored 9-10. Nine, uh, nine, it can be scored 10-8. 10 eight. Eight. Yeah, for it sure. It doesn't have to be a knockdown score. It doesn't have to be a knockdown. He just eight. got the crap beat out of him yeah, that round. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't have to be scored 10-8. Uh, so it's, it's kind of ridiculous, man. But, is you know, it's obviously boxing is... Uh, it's corrupt, man. It's yeah, corrupt. yeah, it's a That's game why, you know like, going in. Like Joe Frick, like uh, George Foreman, you just gotta go for the knockout. I mean, George Foreman <laughs> said, George, yeah, always, George always, always goes for the knockout. Uh, yeah. Highest percentage yeah. ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my boy knock you, you out. Got, you gotta go for the KO. You yeah, he get you KO. out of there. And you know what? That's that was my mentality in my last fight. I told I my tra- that. I told my trainer, I said, We're not going to the scorecards. I said, We gotta just like let's not play let's not play no games. Let's just take this guy out. And that was my mentality. Like, I, w- I went back to Philly. I went back to the rugged gyms. Right. You know what I mean, because right, right, I, right, I right, live right. in L.A. now. So, you know, I got kind of. Your I, blood I got, got a little I got, thick. I got, I, got a little, I got a little civilized. <laughs> <laughs> I got a little civilized. You know, it was like Mickey so Rocky. You got civilized. <laughs> you got civilized, right. <laughs> I mean, And it was like, man, you know what? I got to go back to the hood. I got to go uh, back to Philly, man. And uh, I went to Philly, back to the rugged gyms. Great sparring. And, um, you know, I had like that, that, that hunger that, you know. To get that, it back, that feeling came back, and you know we went for the kill, we went for the knockout. You got, you got to man, you got to be a killer. The moment you lose your killer instincts, yeah, you done. You got to yeah. be, you got to be a killer. You just got to know how to control it though. Yeah, but you have to go for the kill, definitely. Wow, yeah, man. I, I don't know. I think that I think that there's there's a way boxing needs to change yeah. that will it's, influence people to have that killer instinct. Yeah, but also will make you know. Okay, to to address something you said earlier. With all of this stable play that happens, yeah, I think one of the I think the best thing that came out of the Mayweather Pacquiao fight was that 
uh, HBO and Showtime work together. Yeah, yeah. And and Golden Boy worked together with Top Rank to yeah, yeah. to put the fight together. Yeah. Because it showed that there was a way to even do that. Yeah. Um, because before that, if you remember, the stables were so separate. Well, it still is. And and yeah, but is. but at least we've seen it happen. Yeah. We saw it happen again with Joshua and Klitschko last yeah. year. And Joshua, but yeah. but what my point is is that just like how you're saying, then a lot of the times the promoters force feed guys to yeah. the public that the public exactly. isn't really interested in. Exactly. And let me tell you what happens. That cannibalizes the sport. Yeah, yeah. Because if I'm a young stud and I'm 10 years old, 12 years old, I, we grew up watching yeah, fights. Yeah. We watch all the fights. Yeah, yeah. But if I'm 10 or 12 years old and every single month there's at least one fight that I watch where there's a 119-109, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying as a kid? I'm saying I need to go play for the Eagles. Yeah, yeah. I don't need to I don't need exactly. to go. I don't I don't want to box. Exactly. That this isn't I, I'm getting my yeah, head yeah. beat in and I might not win. Yeah, even right. when I'm obviously uh, won the fight. Yeah, yeah. Or exactly. close. Even, even if you cheat me, just don't cheat me like that. Yeah, cheat yeah. me. It's <laughs> cheat, cheat, cheat. It's yeah, cheat me 116, 113. Yeah, it's hard. Don't yeah. cheat me 119, 109. Like 116, 113. I'm so, just yeah. saying. <laughs> cheat me, cheat me somewhere like that. Don't no, don't play me out that way. It's horrible. But you know what I also what I think it is is like, you know, back back in the day, you know, the best fought the best. And when a guy took an L, he was good. You know what I'm saying? He was still good. he fought the best. But what's happening now is um, promoters are making fighters feel like if you catch an L, you're done. And it's just right. not true so, in the eyes of the and public. And it's not. It's, it's not. not true. So, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Pacquiao took some L's. He's still Pac. Like, Pacquiao got stretched by Marquez, put to sleep. Right. And they were still able to generate the biggest fight in boxing against him and Floyd. Yeah. Yep. So, at the end of the day, fans could care less. Fans but, want to see but, guys that want to fight. But the promoters, the promoters, is their way of... Pimp- Control. No, pretty much is their way of pimping fighters. That's what it is. Yeah, is, is, a, is a pimp hole game. So yeah, real. that's what it is. So they 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 instill that fear in a fighter. You catch this L, you done, you chop liver. So they put that fear in a fighter where fighters can't be comfortable. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So that's that's what's horrible. It's, honestly, honestly, it's really the, the promoters. The promoters right. are ruining it. You know what I'm saying? They're ruining it for the fans. It's not the fighters. You know, uh, the fighters are Garcia, the usage of the... Yeah, Danny Garcia will fight Spence. You know what I'm right. saying? Uh, no, Just like he fought Thurman. And, to be honest, fighters will fight anybody. We're fighters. Right. We're fighters. Like, that's what we do. We fight in front of millions and yeah. we on TV. We're willing, we willing to put ourselves out there to fail in front of the world. You know what I mean, there's a chance that you're going to be bloodied up or you get no stretched. Doubt. Anything can happen. So we got, we're willing to fight anybody. It's really the promoters that do, you know, they're the puppet masters you know what I'm saying so I think it's the promoters that are ruining it because they got their own agenda they're greedy no doubt. they're greedy you know what I'm saying and then they use you and they get rid of you when they're oh, yeah. on to their next exactly exactly and it, it, it's horrible to look this is what I like about you know the NBA when a guy retires you know what I'm saying he's in his 50s and his 60s he still got respect they put him courtside yeah absolutely they, bring they put him down. courtside they honor him you know what I'm saying? Boxing don't do that. When yeah, you but see, that's the part that when you see, that we were talking about. Too. Yeah, I feel you. When, yeah. when, when do you ever see the legends, the greats, ringside? Only if they're ringside. being used because right. they need the dough. Yeah. But you, mean, know, you don't see them with the pomp and circumstance that they should have for being, you oh, know. Yeah, I horrible. mean, the, the, the greatest one of all time is the, the story of Joe Lewis. Right. And Joe Lewis right. ends up as a greeter at that's Caesars crazy. Palace. And You're talking about the, the greatest heavyweight, probably he did, the greatest heavyweight champion yeah. of all time. He did. He did America a favor. He went. He went. Overseas, went overseas you know with saying? the with the military on the strength, and, and they ran up his tab with the taxes. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's a dirty, yeah, yeah. dirty game. Yeah, it's dirty. Well, I suggest you, you know, you continue <laughs> to fight and get, yeah, yeah. get what you're gonna get. I know you love to fight, which is key to the whole thing. Oh yeah, no and, doubt. And then and then keep it moving because they're trying to use you. You should definitely return the favor. Oh yeah, no doubt. Yeah. So, what do you, do you have any fights upcoming? Is anything inked or locked right now? Well, I mean, we we was in the works of making something. You know, play out, but you know, at the end of the day, is I'm I'm a negotiator. Right, you know I'm saying I'm self managed. Okay, you know what I mean, nice. so I'm not I was I'm not digging what they what they putting the t- down. They you ain't picking up what right they putting down right yeah, now. I'm not I'm not, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not digging it. So you know, um, you know, I'm just waving my options, man. You know, what I'm saying I'm just waving my options and just waiting for the right because I know my worth. You know what I'm saying it's like you can't you can't you ain't gonna front on me with. Oh well, you got this much losses. Fans don't care. 
people don't care. still follow they, you. They still follow me. And they you know it every day fight. on social media. Yeah. You know it every day when you walk around. Exactly. You know what time it is. Exactly. So it's like, you know, you're not going to tell me different. So I know what I'm worth. So it's like I'm at that point where I'm just like, you know, I'll, I'll be patient and I'll wait for the right opportunity. And, it's, it, and the rest ain't going to hurt you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. the rest isn't going to hurt out. you. Continue to, to continue to, to train. Yeah. Well, I tell you, you count on our support. Oh, thanks, man. 100%. Appreciate it, appreciate it appreciate bro. Appreciate you. Yeah. Appreciate you coming through. And I honestly, with the way that the game is, man, so much of it is just about popularity. Oh, and yeah. you have plenty of that. You know, yeah, yeah. people people no mess doubt. with you. No doubt. No and doubt. and I have a feeling that some of these guys are going to think that, oh, well, you know what? You know, we could go with Rosado. Yeah. And they're going to run into a problem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they got a, oh, they a problem on their every, Everybody about to run into a problem. Man, <laughs> it's, it's different, man. It's just the mindset is different. The the work ethic, just me, just being healthy all the way around, man. Uh, yeah, that, taking care of my body when when I'm not in the ring, and I'm saying like just eating right, you know, right, you know, I, I don't I don't drink no more, you know, what I'm saying like I let that go, and it's just it's just feeling more healthy mentally, not just physically, but I mean, mentally. How long does it take you saying? to recover now? You know, I I recover pretty good, man. You know, what I'm saying I do I do a lot of this scientific stuff, like you know, a Norma Tech machine. Uh, hyperbaric chamber and oh right you know, i do i just i get real scientific with it you know right just to, it works yeah yeah it does it does work man so you know i feel i feel good you know right after my last fight i chilled for a little bit went right back to the gym went to went back to work nice yeah yeah that's great yeah yeah and now tell me this what do you think about this jorge lanada's fight coming up this weekend you gonna I, go I, I, like, I like jorge no i'm not gonna go but i like <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I ain't supporting go to boy right now <laughs> we got i ain't supporting we go to got boy right now, right now. You know, Oscar be talking about fighting. Oscar be talking. Yeah, he be he be saying he got a bug a bug every yeah, now and then. Yeah, he says I, that. He does. I'm, I'm here, Oscar. You ready for? <laughs> if you want some? I'm here, Oscar. Let's go. <laughs> no, but uh, I like Oscar should say should still stick his head in the sand behind the fact that he actually he actually had Floyd in trouble the first five rounds of that fight. Oh, no, and, yeah. and was popping the jab and literally abandoned it. Yeah, yeah. I thought he threw the fight. I couldn't believe. I was watching. I was like, yeah, yeah. and I was, at that point actually, I followed. I was a Mayweather fan. Because I followed him before I followed him when he was yeah, pretty boy. Yeah, 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 and he was a monster. Yeah, yeah. No and doubt. uh and I remember thinking to myself, I was like, Oh shoot, this yeah. boy's in trouble right now. And then he just went completely away from the jab. He just he he got fatigued. He got you tired. think that's what it was? Yeah, but you know, he wasn't taking care of himself. He had all well, of his he, problems, at substance that time, problems. At that time Oscar was thirty four. And he also was, and, was on the stuff. He was yeah, like he wasn't taking care of his life. Yeah, exactly. Didn't seem like he was I, mentally in a good place. Right. Yeah. That's why it's just important to take care of yourself when uh, right after that fight, man. Just make sure you're eating right and just right. you have to, bro, because it catches up to you. You can't and cheat the game. You can't cheat the game, man. It catches up to you. It's tough. That's why Bernard lasts so long. He's just unreal. I mean, he's a freak. Philly's finest. Yeah, Philly's finest. <laughs> but he lasts so long because I've I seen his lifestyle. Like, I've been in nine he training camps with him. Jump, he used to jump in the gym down there at Fifth Street in uh, in Miami. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he'll, just, he'll come in. I did camp with but, him in that gym one time. And did you? Yeah, he'll yeah. come in, mess with Dino, do some work. And then he'll, he'll literally you'd be like, hey, what's up, B-Hop? Oh, man, just ran down here. He literally just run down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'll, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll, every day he's he doing his road obs work. Obsessed. He's yeah. obsessed, man. Super disciplined. Yeah, yeah, super disciplined, man. So now, and that's what I wanted to ask you. Then now, rank me your Philly fighters. Who who you love out the Philly fighters? My how do you? Philly I know fighter. you love them all, but how you love them? Yeah, yeah. I will put um. I'll put Smoke and Joe one. Yeah, I really? mean, I will put Rocky Balboa two. <laughs> 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 so you like the real uh, Joe? Or you like the fake Joe? No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> nah, I put, I put smoke. <laughs> I go with Smoke and Joe. I go with B Hop, uh, and then I go with Meldrick Taylor. Oh, Meldrick. Meldrick Taylor was like Forget a beast. You know what I'm saying? But man, Philly has so many man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Benny, yeah, yeah. Benny Briscoe was a legend in Philadelphia. But um, I think those would be my top three, man. Yeah, Fraser, Eldrick too, and he loved the Chavez. That yeah, was well, he he was he was beating Chavez, yeah. but beat Chavez to he death. just he got caught. He yeah, got caught, was, man. He was seven save his life. Uh, seven, yeah. I saved that I, man's I, life. I, I, I was devastated. But you know what? He was death. never the same after. No, no, Richard still, still ruined his life. Still ruined his life, which was probably yeah. behind twenty grand or yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. Probably fifteen. Back then, might have been seventy five hundred. Yeah. But you know what? But you know what, though, man, the light was on. The light was on. Yeah. The thing is that Meldrick, man, that fight, even with even with um, Richard Steele stopping the fight, which I thought wasn't a good stoppage. I need me neither. You know, um, just he couldn't get over that. 
No, 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 no. But I can understand. I can understand how. You talk about legend. Yeah, there's nobody bigger than who you say, Sir Thomas. Yeah, yeah. He just beat a legend. Yeah, yeah. And then you have somebody rip rip you off in the last seconds. I mean, literally. Was it seven seconds left? Something like that. Seven, no, eight it seconds. was like fight was over. Yeah, the, it was the, literally the green, the red the light, the red light, red light, light came on. Ten seconds, but he, had counted, but he had stopped the fight. Yeah, like with no, there was no time. He's right because you know what happened. I think that he 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 went, he ran in there, and then he fight like he was gonna do a count. And then by the time, and by the time he hugged him, yeah, that, that's it. That's I, it. No, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I say that man's life. Yeah, yeah. It's Larry Merchant jammed him up. He yeah. should have. No, it was I crazy, watched a special man. on that. They, they, HBO had a fantastic special on how Mel Taylor never bounced back. Again. I, it's unbelievable. Mean, crazy? Unbelievable. No, it was Can't crazy, that? man. That was a bad stoppage. That was a bad stoppage. He really, never bounced back. Really bad. Yeah, he never bounced back. And that man. that literally would have propelled him to superstardom. And it's sad where Mel Drake's at right now, man. Like, you know, he's he's not in a he, good place. He lost it all. You know what I'm saying? His speech ain't good. Yep. You know what I'm saying is, you know, it's sad, man. But, you know, that's just part that of the sport. And he was that was 15, right? That was uh, that was fifteen rounds. That's fifteen. That was fifteen. No, no, that was twelve. That, that was twelve. 12. Yeah, no, was 12. I think it's fifteen. You sure? Yeah, well, that was look twelve. Looking look figure fact, it out. That fact happened in the nineties. Yeah, early nineties, yeah. which yeah. means that it should have been twelve. Yeah, yeah, it was twelve. The 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 fifteen rounders were like in the early. It stopped like ended, in the early. Ended 80s. with Sugar Ray Leonard stopped the fifteen rounds. Yeah, Sugar Ray Leonard yeah. did that. He stopped those fifteen round fights. I'm pretty sure. But uh, not that you know. I, mean, I ain't gonna I lie though. I ain't gonna lie though. Fifteen rounds is kind of ridiculous. Let me tell you something. Fifteen is. Fifteen, where the rubber meets the road, Jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifteen, a lot of yeah, that, yeah. that's why when you watch these guys, this is why they are legends. Because when you look at it, when you look at these dudes going fifteen, yeah, yeah. and they go to the fifteenth, and they still chunking them, it's yeah, like yeah. wow. Yeah, yeah. Man, what kind of stamina you got? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I, that's what I wanted to ask you about ranking a uh, ranking Philly yeah, fighters. It was the twelve. Uh huh. And then, um, and then who do you like coming up in these? Uh, who do you like in this rematch, man? Who do you like Which, in the, uh, Canelo Triple G? Oh, um, I think Canelo gets him in the rematch. You think? Though. Yeah, because I mean, I think I think Triple G just shows that he's like slowing down. I mean, it, Slow. you can't, but here's the thing, Canelo. Can, look, man, people will call me haters all they want, but Canelo's hyped. You know what I'm saying like he's hyped. Hello. He's hyped, bro. He's hyped. He's Canelo ain't beating Danny uh, Jacobs. Ain't, I, I think Danny Jacobs could beat him. I agree. You know no question. I agree. I mean, I love to fight him. I yeah. love the final because the thing about Canelo is he he fights in spurts and Canelo fights like he knows he's the A side and all I gotta do is throw fifteen punches right. in his round and keep it moving and I'm gonna win the yeah, round. Exactly. He got the attitude when he fight. You know and I'm saying in his whack. You know what I mean? I think Triple G beat him, but it, you know it is what it is. It is what it is. But at the end of the day, he's still Can the bigger name. Canelo doesn't have good stamina, so I mean he, he has the better skills. But that's the thing. That's the problem. He doesn't have stamina, so it could get ugly for him in the later rounds. And he gets hit a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. not a good thing against Gennady. Yeah. In general, I feel like, I feel like that fight now in the, in the second go around, I think the odds favor Canelo, but I'm still going Triple G. Yeah, just because of heart. Because the heart makes up a lot in the fighter and, and triple, I, I, and I don't, I don't, I haven't seen the heart from Canelo like that. Yeah, yeah. Because when, yeah, he, when no, no bite pressed, down, no yeah. bite down. Yeah, yeah. yeah no when bite he gets down. pressed, is he going to be able to to step up to the mic? Because Triple G, if he would stuck with that jab like he did in the first part of the fight, it wouldn't even. He probably would have knocked him out. Yeah, he yeah. start head on. He start head on. There was something yeah. very interesting about that too, because I told him I, that was the best I've ever seen Canelo look. And it just wasn't enough. Yeah. But that was the best I've ever seen him look. Yeah, the yeah, best. Because yeah. usually he's plotting, you know. Mm -hmm. But he actually was on his toes this time. And it's still, at least he, he was running the whole fight. Yeah. I just can't give, you know, the big, big thing for eight, me. I had an eight to four. And so, did, so did we. Yeah. We had an eight to four. Yeah. You're giving and, love and, on a And four. Gener yeah. generous. <laughs> you're being, uh, what I was going to say is you're being generous if you go seven, five. Yeah. Yeah. For them to try to say it was eight, four Canelo. Yeah. That judge at LA Birds tried to say it was eight, four Canelo. Come on, man. Yeah. Are you, you lost your mind. It's ridiculous. 119, 109. Yeah. That's a, it's a code word. That's a code word yeah. for it. Yeah, it's a job. It's, you know, it is what it is, but it's, it's, it's boxing, man. And it's like, it's it's, it sucks. You know yeah. It, yeah sucks. it is what it is. It is what and Triple G had said something to the fact that before the fight, right, that he might retire. Yeah. And so then that automatically that was, automatically a, I felt like, and Gennady's like a homie, but I felt like that was a bad move. <laughs> yeah. Gee, you should have, you should have, you could have kept that to yourself yeah, because yeah, yeah. they don't want to hear that because yeah. they, if that's what they hear, then they know that they got to go with the other guy. Uh huh. hundred percent, unless you knock him out. Mm -hmm. Um, but moving on to something that people do like, which is also rigged. I want to talk <laughs> about the NFL, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, we had a, we had a, a, a caller, Trucker Dave. 
who made a great point because uh, T and I both picked the Jags in that game. Right. And in that game, just as Trucker Dave said, who is a who is a Patriots fan, he said, "Let's be serious, guys. Do you really think the NFL is going to let Tom Brady lose with this group of teams that's in there? They need a star right. in the Super Bowl." It's crazy. And I saw, and, and I'm when when I'm watching these calls that they're making, I'm like, oh, "This is he, the guy's a prophet. This is unbelievable." I don't buy the PI call for thirty six because ultimately. That game was on the road to being a blowout. Mm-hmm. It was fourteen to three, and if and if they get the ball back and put it up was, a three spot, it was seventeen to three. I thought it was fourteen to it three at that point. Three, what that was point. the score in the fourth quarter? Uh, I think they went into the fourth quarter. I think the Patriots actually were the Patriots were down twenty to fourteen, okay. maybe twenty twenty yeah. eleven or twenty fourteen or something. The final I think was twenty four twenty one, right? Something so you like think, that. So you think the uh refs are making calls for Brady for the Pats? The, the refs are making calls for the NFL. Okay, okay. Which right now goes through Tom Brady and Belichick to sell the story of okay. unbelievable eight Super Bowls, unprecedented. Are we looking at the greatest of all time? Look, he pulled off another comeback. <laughs> it's all about the story. It's the same thing in the fight game. Yeah, yeah. It's all about the story. They want a story to sell. And, and I, as to their credit, the machine is so well oiled that the public buys it hook, line, and sinker. Mm-hmm. The public's like, oh, my God, is he the best ever? Maybe he <laughs> is. Let's just go Brady. And they can't get enough. And I'm watching the thing. The pass interference call at the end of the first half changed the entire game. Because if they go in 14-3, even if they don't score, if they go in 14-3 and they get the ball back yeah. and the game is 21-3, man, forget about it. That game's a blowout. That's it. Because they'd yeah. already showed that they were committed to the run. Yeah. Another ridiculous call is when your man stripped uh, Deion James. He stripped Deion him. Lewis. Deion Lewis. Sorry. He, he stripped Deion Lewis. He comes up with the pill and he's to the house. But they call him dead. Nobody <laughs> touched him. Yeah. Why is he dead? <laughs> <laughs> no, nope, nobody touched me. He's dead. It was dead. What? This is another situation where the game had the potential because the Patriots were coming back, but they were still down. Yeah. It's another one of those really big swing plays. My point is this, and people talk to me about being a hater when it comes to to the Patriots and this that, and the other. You can call me a hater if you feel like, but ultimately, the game is played by professionals. And when you're talking about a Tom Brady, you're talking about the best of the best. Mm-hmm. He doesn't need a lot of help. It's not like you need to rig the game in a way that people think you need to rig the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You only need a small amount of help right. to make the guy that's really, really good already. He's already great. Not even, I'm not going to front act like Tom Brady isn't great. You don't need much to make the guy that's great to make him an uh, just an icon, an unbeatable kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Because if he gets the chance, Tom Brady will put your lights out. Yeah. Well, they kept it close, you know, and – you talk about one penalty for the whole game? That's almost impossible. Yeah. Yeah. And and when was the last time that the team had one penalty? Tom Brady. Hey, what a surprise. <laughs> what, what a surprise. Was it that was 2011? It was 2011. It was 6 years ago against the Ravens in another game that the the, the away team should have won up in Foxborough. Yeah. But now that they have what they want, they got the golden boy in uh in in the Super Bowl, let's see if they actually let him play, which leads me to talk to you. Making me paranoid right We're now. Talk- you, should be. <laughs> you should be. You should be on the alert mode. Put that money up right you think, now. You think right. that they want Nick Foles to hold that, that, that cup? Nick Foles or Tom Brady? Tell me what you really yeah. think sounds more plausible. Yeah. Nick Foles wins first Super Which, Bowl you know, or Tom Brady wins sixth Super Bowl? You know what? On paper, though, man, the Eagles defense right now is ridiculous. I think the <laughs> Eagles, I think if it's they let them play square, the Eagles are, like, it's, it's way re- better than that. It's ridiculous no right now. Like, to hold the Vikings at seven, Atlanta at ten. How about drop, this? Drop 38 on the Vikings. They could have dropped more, but at the fourth quarter, yeah, it was so up. up that they just ran the ball. That, the this is what I was going to say. Even more so than the defense, to me, that Vikings defense is legit. No, it's, And they moved the ball. Yeah, it was number one defense. But, I mean, I, I like I them, like I like the chances, man, but it's... I, like I, feel, the I feel what you're saying. I like Chris Long on the team because Chris Long oh, yeah. was just in New England Chris last Long. year, yeah. and he knows what it takes to, or, to rattle Tom Brady and yeah, to beat them. I actually definitely. like Nick Foles. I yeah, mean, I've always been high on Nick Foles, but they, you know, the, he doesn't get his opportunity, and he's a good ball player. Yeah, yeah. And you know, he he's 
passing out of the pocket like what? How how many steps is he taking back? Yeah. One or two step drops, yeah. and he's getting rid of the ball in less than two seconds. Exactly. And so exactly. you know, whatever defense you're playing, you have to be on your toes to be mm -hmm. able to stop something like that. Mm -hmm. You know, but it's just unfortunate because you don't get to see the best teams play. I don't feel like it. Yeah. Because Philadelphia should be there, but the Patriots shouldn't be there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and every year there's some kind of miracle or something that they pull out. It's crazy. And actually, they can call me a hater because I, I, I hate the Patriots now. <laughs> <laughs> it I'm just happened right now? I, I, I'm sick and tired of it. It's too yeah, much. Yeah. It's too much. I mean, they stuff it down your throat, man. I got a Brady, Brady overdose. They stuff it down your throat. They refuse to let anybody else take that mantle. Do you really think the NFL and their advertisers wanted the Jacksonville Jaguars versus the Minnesota Blake, Vikings? Blake Bortles. Yeah. Now Minnesota just got the crap beat out of them. I'm not. They I'm not calling. I'm not talking any conspiracy or anything. No, 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 no. They, I'm not, they, I'm not they, saying they that. They didn't care who made it there. Yeah, that did. They they needed. Yeah, Case Keenum and Nick Foles. Exactly. And Neither one of those quarter, guys. And it's a quarterback league. Quarterback so you league. Know, you know, quarterback they, league. Yeah. And they don't see any of those guys having the potential to pass the baton. Right. And, you know, in it being a quarterback, you don't see anybody's faces usually besides the quarterbacks. Right. Yeah. So you don't even know who these guys are walking around except for they're just giants when you yeah. see them. Like, Man, <laughs> do you play football? Yeah. You know, yeah. Other yeah. Than that. So when you're talking about ripping these guys off, these, these guys go hard. It's like getting ripped off in boxing as well. When you guys go hard like that and you're playing a sport that can actually, it's a life changing sport. Exactly. You know, you can't do that to people. I talked to some guys on the Jags when they literally said, we knew that we were going to have to beat the Patriots and the refs and it sucks, but we feel good about what we have as a core and where we're going next season. Yeah. You know, it is what it is, but that's all the past. Now we look forward. We look forward two weeks, almost two weeks to the Super Bowl. You going to go? No nah, man, you keeping it home? Them tickets is too husky. Them tickets are real. <laughs> chunky. I, I, them tickets are keep, chunky. Keep it real, yeah. To keep it real, somebody gave me a ticket. I think I flipped that thing. <laughs> <laughs> You're a very smart man. Hey, I go you watch, get your I, cheese. I, I go tell watch, you that yeah, much. Yeah, I go watch my brothers. You know what I mean, Why yeah, not? you get your yeah, cheese. Cool. You flip it, man. Yeah, yeah. But it's, nah. it's ridiculous, man. It's somebody ridiculous. gave me somebody somebody hooked me up with tickets once to the <laughs> to the Super Bowl where the Seahawks played the Patriots. Oh, I was in the end zone. I was like, I could have caught a pass. That's I was good. so close. Yeah, yeah. Dude sitting next to me was an NFL vet, and he brought his son, little boy. He's sitting next to me at the start of the game. Game's about to start. National anthem's about to start. He's like, man, you seen what they're going for on uh, StubHub, right? I just couldn't do it, man, with my boy. It means like, man, you know what? You're going to remember this forever, son. You're going to remember <laughs> this forever. I was like, yeah, man, you did the right thing. I was like, but uh, how much How much they going for? <laughs> he was like, the ones four rows behind us just went for forty seven thousand a piece. I was like, "What? <laughs> Can I still get mine off?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had crazy. already scanned my ticket. The guy was in my seat. I was like, "Can I still get him off?" Yeah, that's crazy, man. It's crazy, it's ridiculous, racks. ridiculous, bro. It's man, ridiculous, experience, bro. Jack. Serious case. My, my son, would, my son would have had to chill. He would have had to chill. <laughs> you gotta go to the and, house. And, and, and let me tell you, the house. We gotta watch it at the house, and then, and then we can get you. This is gonna go to your college fund. That's, that's, cra that's crazy, man. <laughs> I'll buy your puppy, son. Man, man. I'm, gonna go, I'm gonna go to Philly though. I'm gonna watch the game in Philly. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, so we're gonna throw a party, whatever, whatever, you know, and just enjoy it. Hopefully, they win, celebrate. But yeah, I can't. I can't spend that type of bread on. on no, no, ticket, man. it's, it's, it's gonna be. It's bro. gonna be some heavy cheese. Yeah. If I end up popping up in the stands, it's gonna be courtesy of. You can count yeah, on that. Word, word. That's, <laughs> that's especially since none of my teams are, are of interest. I, even yeah. though right now I consider myself the biggest Philly fan in the world, I'm with you. I just and and I don't even hate the Patriots. Actually, I love Tom Brady, and I just have a problem. I don't think Tom Brady is a part of it. You know what yeah. I mean? Tom Brady's right. just doing what he does. No, I like, and I like Tom Brady. He's great. Yeah. I like yeah. I like how he carries himself. I yeah. like I like his commitment to excellence. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? It's just that the ball always bounces your way, homeboy, and yeah. it's you know what I mean. And it and it's it's like a microcosm of society at large. You know the the things go the way of of the hype and yeah. he's actually somebody who can deliver yeah, on the yeah. hype he ain't it ain't no fluke right. and yeah, like yeah. that right but yeah you know me myself i'm a, i'm a ride with philly i think philly's right now i think they opened at a 6 point underdog or something right. like that yeah, yeah, yeah which is amazing to me cuz i'm surprised it's not bigger because if you were a 3 point dog at the house mm -hmm. i can't believe you're not a a, a bigger than an 8 point dog mm -hmm. against the golden child. Well, they yeah. might let him play, though. You just never know because now That's at this point, they part. might let The thing play. is, this, the story's crazy, you know, because, like, what team has a backup quarterback? The story is him, crazy. That takes him to the Super Bowl, but not just take him to the Super Bowl, just balling out. I mean, forget about He's it. He's balling out. His numbers are since, crazy. Since he got the call. Yeah, he Like, balling. he woke up and was like, oh, it's McCarson's hurt? Cool. Yeah. He finished that Ram. I was at the Rams game. He finished that Ram game solid. 
I was at that game. You did. You know, we left the That's how they won the game. Yeah, we left the we left the game sad though. Yeah. Yeah. It was (laughs) like you caught an L even in the dub. But apparently you didn't. But you know what I'm saying? It was like, you know, let's give him a chance and he he's balling he's been balling out. He had Carson Wentz is gonna be a little while before he can come back too. So you're gonna have Nick Foles in the beginning of next year. Maybe. Yeah, he's an ACL, right? Yeah, you got that ACL. Run an ACL. You takes about a year to get it together, right? Okay. You know, shit, nowadays, it, man, it you depends. never know. You got guys it coming depends. back in like six, seven months. It depends, man. Like technology is crazy. Yeah, technology is nuts. Yeah. Look at look a, at Adrian Peterson. Yeah. yeah, but I don't think they would let him come back like that. You know, uh, what was you I had to tear uh, calf muscle, and uh, you know it sucked in the beginning, man. But uh-huh. I healed up pretty quick. Really? Yeah, within like four months, I was, wow. I was pretty I was, wow on a torn muscle. Yeah, tear a tear uh, calf muscle. That's impressive. You know? Yeah, yeah. Technology I mean, I, is nuts. Still, still, the legs still felt numbed, but you know I was able to walk, run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't yeah. like in the past. If that yeah, would have yeah. happened to you twenty years ago, yeah, you would have exactly. to lay up. Yeah, you or or yeah. you might even be finished. Yeah, or you might be finished. Exactly. You know what I mean? It, it was expensive as hell. The recovery process, though, but it worked. It costs money, man. I just had both of money. my wheels cut on. I just had both of my knees cleaned out, and I tell you, you're right. Because you gotta you gotta get massage, yeah. you gotta get therapy, you need to be in the pool, you yeah. need to do the cryo chamber, you need to do the muscle stimulator, yeah, yeah. you need everything. Exactly. That's yeah. No joke. That's yeah, no it's joke. real. We're gonna stay with the Philly theme. And uh I have to say, and I've said it a couple times, you know what? I think the Philadelphia 76ers are on to something. Oh word. Really? I, I, I think I, like I think the, no, I like the team, man. I, I, like I, I really team. do. I not like not this year per se, but I, I don't think they're far off. And beak a ball. I was, at the, stay I, was, I was at the game when he played uh, when they played the Lakers. He put up that forty seven piece, yeah, right? Yeah. Forty nine, forty seven, something like that. Forty eight or something. Yeah, like that. he put up yeah. big numbers. Yeah, he was balling. And you got that kid Ben Simmons. To Man, that kid Ben Simmons is as as good as they get. Yeah. Telling you, he has the potential to really be something special. Right, a Magic Johnson type player for real. Uh huh. With hops, and I don't throw that around. Yeah, with hops. Yeah, because he'll drop he's it on nice. you too. Yeah, yeah, no, he's good. I like that team, man. They got was, a nice team. I was a Lakers fan because you know Kobe's from Philly. Right, but you know I can't really rock by with way the, of uh, Italy. I can't really rock with the <laughs> Lakers right now, man. See, what's funny is, and now what I was gonna say is, what's funny is, is I actually like watching, uh, I actually like watching Philadelphia, and I like like watching the the Lakers. I don't really, we don't talk too much basketball. Basketball kind of rubbed me the wrong way in certain ways because they've gone too far with the theater. Every year, you know who's gonna be in the finals. Yeah. They push and pull strings, and there's some suspect calls and blah 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 and blah blah blah. Yeah. blah. So like I, three know, acts, right? Yeah, man. I mean, I'm on TV. If I wanted to see something scripted, I would go read my own script. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, this is, this is, you know, it is what it is. There's a lot of things that I don't like, but there's a handful of things I do like, like Ben Simmons and like this Young Lake show. You know, they need some help. But, I mean, look at it. Right now, first half versus the Bulls, Ben Simmons. It, it, ben Simmons, wow. Ben Simmons ended up with 19, 17, 14, and 2. Are you mm. kidding? Are you crazy? 19 points, 17 boards, 14 dimes, and two blocks. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. This is his first year. Yeah. He can ball. He can go. Is he from Australia? Yeah. He's from, yeah. He's from Oz, mate. The kid is real. Uh-huh. Anyways, yeah, but, uh, you know, and how about your boy? Your boy King James got his 30K. The youngest ever. <laughs> how would you feel about King James? I like I like LeBron, man. I do, too, man. Like he's LeBron. done everything right. I, I mean, can't I, front on LeBron. I, I, I mean, would have liked for him to do the dunk contest. It would have been cool. One a year, right? Yeah, right. Because yeah. the dunk contest, he's like, I, I tell people, like, y'all don't understand. The dunk contest, like Vince Carter. Used to be the Richard, right. thing. It was, it was the thing. Right. It was like, the like, thing. Like, like, now it's a little corny. It's, it is. It's, it's, it is corny It now. is corny. It's not a little. It's, it's corny. Vince Carter. Richardson, you uh, you? Uh, Steve Francis, Steve oh, franchise. Man. Yo, bro, like it, it, the dunk concert was there. It was legit. It was I'm telling you, and, I, and I'm I'm and older LeBron than you, man. Came to the league. Dominique and Le- Mike. Yeah, LeBron came to the league when the dunk concert was still lit. And yeah, the fact that he never did it, it was like, uh, and it was everybody like, knew he had. Jordan the ops. did it. Jordan did Kobe it. Kobe did it. The best players in the league have done it. That's the only thing I knock uh, LeBron about. Well, that's good, though. Other, he separated other, himself. You other, didn't want to nah. <laughs> get out of here. Other than that, I like LeBron. No, I like him. I man. always root for him in the finals. Me too. I root for yeah, him, period. Yeah. He's one of the best athletes out there in the exactly. world. Exactly. I mean, exactly. the guy's been living under the microscope since he was 15 years old. Yeah. You know, no major scandals, whatever problems that yeah. he has. He keeps him close to the vest. Yeah, yeah he made a, a little trip up by with the, the big announcement and blah, blah, blah. But he went down there and won two rings. So what yeah. can you really say? About it. Yeah. Now he has thirty thousand points. Yeah, youngest ever. And he and he looks like he's twenty five. Yeah, he the like he, he take care of himself. The, the, he's a prime example of spending the dough to take yeah, care yeah. of yourself to recover and eat yeah. right and do the whole thing. Yeah. 
The yeah. kid, he looks like he hasn't aged. He's supposed yeah. to spend an astronomical amount of money every month on his, uh, you know, his health. Yeah, I think he said a million dollars a year. A million dollars a year. Yeah. yeah. No. A year. A million dollars a year. Why does he yeah. got to pay a million a month? Why are you running up bronze numbers? <laughs> God, that's where he is. You got like that. A million dollars a month. What is he? That's Gold crazy, flakes? But then you know, he goes to the Super know, Bowl. You know, Harrison, you know, he's with the Patriots now. Yep. He, you know, word is he spends like a half an M. I believe it. On and he's, he's a he's stud a, too. He's a freak. Yeah, he yeah, is. He's he, in crazy shape. I mean, I, I follow him on Instagram. He's like in the gym hard all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. power lifting too. Yeah, 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 man. James Harrison, he's man, and now he might sneak up and get that ring. So, uh, he's trying to sneak and get him a ring. <laughs> you got the Pittsburgh fans so mad at him. Oh my goodness, he won't be able to go back to Pittsburgh. Huh? But I think he'll Can't be all go right. Back his back. Who's gonna say something to James Harrison? Uh, <laughs> Ain't nobody saying to James yeah. Harrison and face to face like that. You crazy? Well. Gabe, yeah, you've rocked with us, and now it's time to talk about a game so fine it's played on diamonds. <laughs> we don't have much to report from Philadelphia when it comes to baseball. Yeah, man. Uh, you guys have a nice stadium. You have that going for yeah, you. We, you we, actually made an we, upgrade. We was popping in 08, 09. I mean, popping, <laughs> popping. Chase Udley, <laughs> Ryan squad. Howard, the squad, Roy man. Halliday, rest in peace, yeah, Cliff yeah, Lee, yeah. Roy Oswalt for a little while. They had yeah. a crazy yeah. squad. I actually met Darren Daunton and Holiday Darren Daunton. At, at a bar. At the same time, it was crazy. I was like, I called my cousin, like, you ain't gonna believe he was at the bar. It's Darren Dawn. <laughs> it's like, Darren Dawn's like childhood hero, bro. It's like 93 World Series. I was a kid. I cried right. that day. Right, 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 right. <laughs> I was right, like, right. Darren Dawn's here. You know what I mean? I told we had a drink with him and everything, man. Oh, it was really? dope. It was dope. Yeah. It was wow. crazy. They passed, they both passed like three months. Yeah, within you know, each other. Yeah, with, yeah, it was crazy, man. Yeah, it's yeah. true. That Philly yeah. squad was real. Yeah. Back in the day. Yeah. Dykes and them, huh? Now they, you know, they a problem now, but. Yeah. They're all right, though. They're talking about signing you Darvish right now. Okay. And they stepped up and got Carlos Santana, which was good. But baseball is heated up because yeah. this guy from the word go last season called the uh, called the Houston Astros the best team in the game and said they were going to win a World Series. Mm. You can run back to tape. We got it on tape. Mm. And uh, and they went and they did just that. Word. Took them all seven games of the World Series, but they got it done. Got it done. Now, some moves that we're looking at right now, what do you feel about what's going on in the hot stove? That's what they call the baseball offseason, the hot stove, yeah. in case you didn't know. Mm-hmm. you feel like it was going down in the hot stove, T? It's hot right now. You know, you're talking about the, the Giants getting Andrew McCutcheon. You got Evan Lagoria out there on the Giants. The Giants are going to be a World Series contender this year. You think they're going to be a World Series contender? I think so. I think they have the potential to do that, to win the West. Wow, I don't know. Dodgers the Dodgers, seem, the Dodgers have, seem like they win it every year. Yeah, so but the Dodgers don't, don't have a rotation anymore. We're going to see. We're going to see about that. But what we want to talk about now is we just had some absolute stone-cold studs in, inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame and some stone-cold studs left out. So let's talk about who got in. Chipper Jones got in, 97.2% of the vote. Vladimir Guerrero got in. Jim Tomei got in. And Trevor Hoffman got in. Who did not get in, who just barely missed the cut, was Edgar Martinez. Mike Messina didn't get in. Roger Clemens is way down. Damn. Barry Bonds is way down. And Kurt Schilling is way down. Whoa. Of that list, I actually, other than him being a total jerk, I can't understand why Kurt Schilling's not in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, but that's why he's not getting in because he's a jerk. You know, he's, He wasn't a juicer. No, but he said stuff to rub people the wrong way. And this hey, is he why, was a, He's a jerk, but he, yeah. has to, but he has to pay for that on a social level. Yeah, but this that is why the nothing. writers shouldn't have the, anything to do with this. You know, you should let the players vote him in. They're the past pre- players and the present players, but the writers are voting these guys in based on how they feel about these dudes, like Barry Bonds. Barry Bonds' numbers were good before he was actually on the juice. Although I don't know when he started juicing. So Herein <laughs> here lies the problem. Here we can see problem. because he grew. He grew a lot. Yeah, but his numbers weren't Hall of Fame before. He yeah, produced. his numbers was consistent. He was consistent was every consistent, single but they year. They weren't HOF. Yeah, they were HOF. No, twenty five bombs ain't HOF. No, but he was in thirty nine bombs. He was the year in year out. Juicing. No, that was not. Go to San Francisco. No, look, was, pull up the numbers, my brother. No, that was pull not. Up the, pull up the what you ain't know. Pull up the numbers. He went to San Francisco. Numbers. He went to San Francisco, and that's when he just started. Was completely unstoppable. I'm gonna read you some of his numbers. You, his numbers are bonkers. I mean, if that's not I'm even talking a about before he got into. Let's San talk Fran. about in general. Should guys who were known to be on the juice get in the hall or not? I don't see why not. I mean, I think so. Yeah, yeah I don't see why not. You people want to put an asterisk? Do whatever you got to do. The numbers are the numbers. If you weren't going to accept them, then you shouldn't let them play back then. So you can't say now, mm, you know what? Nobody necessarily knew back then. They knew. They they knew. Just You can't say that I didn't know. Turn your head and say I didn't know what was going on. You knew what was going on, but it was good for the game at the time. And now it's not good for the game, and so now you want to act like it didn't happen. It doesn't work like that. It's, it's fact. These numbers are fact. These numbers aren't being made up. 
Now, but see, to me, I don't agree with it. But you know, it, it, the numbers are the numbers. Herein lies the problem to me. Pedro Martinez dealt during the middle of the Juice era. Mm -hmm. Pedro Martinez gave you about five of the most unhittable years in baseball history. Yeah. I mean, lights out. Yeah. You're telling me the guy who was juicing should be alongside with Pedro Martinez? That's not right, T. Which one? Roger Clemens, huh? I'm saying any of them. Any of them that are on a... Yeah, but what, what I'm saying is, is a guy like John Smoltz, a guy like Pedro Martinez, guys who were absolutely unhittable, in the middle of dudes taking the needle and hitting balls 800 feet, you still couldn't hit Pedro. I don't care what you took. Yeah, you got to be able to touch the ball. <laughs> you, could, you couldn't hit Pedro. And Pedro weighed a buck thirty, soaking wet with the curl juice. <laughs> so we know he wasn't taking nothing. And we yeah. saw him deal when he was on Philly the last. Day. And then he, as a matter of fact, his last stop was with yeah. Philly, and he, he pitched, dealt. He pitched real good against the Yankees. Oh my goodness! He yeah. pitched real good against the Dodgers. Yeah. We were at Dodgers we were at Stadium. Dodger Stadium. He was on the Phillies. His last, I think that he drove yeah, him out of the league uh -huh. after that. His last game, yeah. they brought yeah. him out of retirement, and he came back and pitched. He wasn't throwing ninety seven. Was that a playoff no game? Yeah. It was a playoff game. And and he this dude carved the Dodgers and they yeah. blew his game in like yeah. the eighth and they took him out in like the eighth yeah. and they blew his game the the the, yeah. the bullpen blew his game, but what my point is all of these guys, Vladimir Guerrero, stone cold stud, so now you're telling me Barry Bonds should be there and it's a trip because to me if you look at the numbers Barry Bonds is at fifty six point four percent that means that it's split right down the middle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's right there. But, you know, I mean, you, what's the criteria to get in? They need to establish that. I agree. And it used to be something like, you know, for example, it used to be 500 home runs get you in the hall. Yeah. Fred McGriff had 493 Broncos. Yeah, and now, but but he's not getting in the hall. But what are we going to call performance enhancing? Because a lot of those guys back in the day were using speed so that they can play the 162 game season. So that's a that's a performance enhancing drug at that point, right? Because you need that to be able to sustain so you can play the whole summer. So if you don't take your speed, then you can't play. <laughs> yeah, but the speed but isn't the same. But it doesn't make you. This is like saying that you Dwight still Gooden, put up. You still Dwight put up was on cocaine and was striking dudes out. It was not to <laughs> enhance performance. It was just because was. he had a problem. <laughs> it was. And and let me tell you, Dwight Gooden went out there and dealt on that stuff. Yeah, Daryl Strawberry went out there and hit bombs on that stuff. Dwight Gooden won the World Series on that. On stuff. that stuff yeah. and, and missed the parade. <laughs> 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 That's why you got to bring that up. <laughs> it's real though. Yeah, but uh, performance enhancing. <laughs> this enhanced his performance. He was out of his mind when he did it. Uh, that doesn't mean that he was enhanced. He, it just he means was he was out of his mind. He was next level. So, you know what? So, if there's no criteria, you can't say, you can't let the writers say, oh, well, you know what? I don't like Barry Bonds because he didn't talk to me back then. He didn't do this. He didn't do that. And didn't take his numbers away. Yeah. It's just not real. That's not real. Yeah. You know, Roger Clemens. Roger Clemens was a stone cold monster. Forget about it. And now you're saying that Roger Clemens can't get in because you guys don't like his attitude? And Kurt Schilling is the same way. Kurt Schilling, well, he got him two rings. He brought Boston to victory. He brought and and he beat the Yankees in the time when yes. the Yankees actually needed to do. Yeah, so the now you want to say all star team exactly. So now you're gonna say Kurt Schilling can't get in because he's a jerk. I don't agree with Kurt Schilling's beliefs, but yeah, that doesn't have nothing to do with his game. Yeah. Well, to me, him being a jerk isn't the same as Kurt Schilling being a jerk isn't the same as taking a needle. Being a jerk is one thing, and that's also factoring into Barry Bonds' situation, no doubt about it. Mm -hmm. But. Kurt Schilling was never acute. He was never on the list or he's never, you know what I mean? Kurt Schilling wasn't a part no. of, Kurt Schilling just went out there and shut people down. Yeah. And also in the middle of the steroid era. Also at the end, the tail when end. When he was with Philly era. and he came up and he was throwing 100 miles an hour. And, and, and it he, wasn't, he was just wild. Yeah. And it wasn't like an everyday thing for people to throw 100 miles an hour. And then dude no. came out just blowing cheese. He just came out blowing cheese. Man, Kurt Schilling was tough. And he was wild. <laughs> yeah. He was, it was dangerous to step in the box. Yeah. That's Kurt Schilling. But so now you're saying Kurt can't get in. What's, what's the reason why Kurt can't get in? I'm, don't ask me. I didn't get a vote. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I didn't keep Kurt out. Who, who did Roger get the uh, the road rage on when when the bat broke and he threw it at him? Uh, that was Mike, Mike Piazza. Piazza. Was Piazza huh? Mike, Mike Piazza, Piazza yeah. who also got in the hall. That yeah, was also suspect on, the juice. Pia Piazza was the man. Yeah, he Piazza was the man, but, but he both been on the juice. So. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of people. Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones. Chipper Jones. Forget about it. Larry's a stud. Forget yeah, about Chipper it. Jones Chipper Jones is. Yeah, I mean. You didn't want to see Chipper Jones if he if he was not on your team. If you weren't a Braves yeah. fan, you didn't want to see Chipper Jones come Especially to the in a plate. big time situation. Everybody, everybody was a Braves fan at the time. Yeah, they yeah I mean, it had to that be. Was, that was a dope squad. That's that was a great monster squad. squad. Monster squad. squad. Yeah. Chipper just made him better.
Yeah. They just because yeah. they remember they brought him up when it seemed like their run was over. Yeah. And then they brought him up, and it was like, yeah. are you crazy? Let's, they let's got do this, this all over they again. They got this kid out there playing third base. You yeah. cannot stop. I felt like they brought him down a little bit when they moved him to left field, though. They I agree. They never yeah. moved him to the outfield. I agree. Yeah. I think it, it brought some injury to his game. Mm-hmm. We hung out with him a couple of times. He was at, at the stadium. He was, man, super cool yeah. guy. Real cool dude. Man, it's a cool dude. Then he went deep two times. Then he went deep on his birthday twice. Yeah. Bombs at Dodger crazy. Stadium. Andrew Jones was a problem. Andrew, Andrew Jones, Jones was a stud too when mm-hmm. he was out there. He came and stole the Dodgers' money. Yeah. He, stole, <laughs> he, took, he took fifty million off the Dodgers like it wasn't nothing. That's it crazy. was a highway robbery with no gauge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was unbelievable, unbelievable. Now, I remember him in the World Series, eighteen, three home runs. It's yeah. Youngest of youngest ever. Crazy. Youngest ever to play in the World yeah, Series. Crazy I believe. Cal, he can go yeah. get it too. Yeah. Man, he could go get it. Yeah. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, moving on. Last topic of the day, ladies and gentlemen, is the Australian Open. It's going down, down under, mate. And uh, unfortunately, the world number one, Rafael Nadal, suffered an injury. What it looks like, a lot of this stuff has to do with heat. Um, They're saying on-court temperatures down there, because it's summer in Australia, on-court temperatures are popping at around 140 degrees. Remember we talked about it last week? Of course. Guys are cramping up. Uh, it seems like it's happening less to the ladies, though, huh? The ladies don't seem like they're cramping up. I don't know what that is. I wonder, maybe it's because they don't play five sets. Because this was a five-set match where Nadal got hurt. Uh, but the story, I would say, is this young man, Chung, from South uh, Korea. And this is something that could turn into something bigger than just tennis. You know, because he's representing right now, Hyun Chung is representing for uh, South Korea... He's about to play Roger Federer in the semifinals. Um, I think he's got a chance. That's just very optimistic of you. I'm going to stick with Roger on this one, but you never know. I mean, he's 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 already uh, extinguished uh, Sasha Zverev. He's He beat Novak Djokovic. So, I mean, he's on an, an incredible run. Yeah, and the thing of it is that he believes in himself. He and believes. That, and that's what's most important because if you believe in your own game, then it's not a problem, you know? He just can't listen to the naysayers or the doubters have you going into that match and thinking about, oh, you know, you're going against Federer. Just play your game. I think he's got a chance. Got to play his game. Got to play his game for sure. And um, it's interesting. On the women's side, Kerber ran through uh, uh, Madison Keys in an unfortunately quick way. But right? it's, uh, she's, she's very tough when she's healthy and when she's down there. That's her, that's her tournament. Um, but that's actually taking a back seat to tennis uh, Sandgren, the American tennis player, who's made some very interesting alt-right type statements on his Twitter account before he became uh, popular for breaking into the semi, the quarterfinals where Chung actually uh, retired him. But he's he's tried to he's tried to he's tried to erase some of his rhetoric, but he said some. Uh, some pretty dark things, some pretty dark things. And now Serena Williams, the all-time tennis great, has jumped in and said that he really needs to apologize for this alt-right view and all this other stuff. But it's uh, it's very interesting to see the division like this in the world of tennis. Now, how long ago was it that he made those statements? Uh, quite a while ago. It was before he got, you know, he wasn't necessarily a somebody, but in this tournament... He's beat some people that took him to, you know, past a certain point. Right. Which now put everything the, comes under the scrutiny. Lights on That's what it is. It's a new world, this social media world. You can't, you know. Yeah. And, and it stays there forever. Even if you delete it, it mm. stays there forever. What you say is what you say. You got to really think about that nowadays. Yeah. And you're supposed to be the land of the free. So he thought he can get away with free speech. And now he's got to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Right>? true. <laughs> it's true. Because, I mean, when you have someone with the weight of Karima, uh, Karima of Serena <laughs> Williams coming out. This mm-hmm. is a serious thing. This is a, like, this is the top of the top. Mm-hmm. And she's trying to do the right thing. But my whole thing is, I like to see who you are for real. You, you put it out there so we know what you who what you're about and who you are. So don't play cookie cutter now and come out with a, a nice a statement, flowery cookie, statement, uh-huh, nice flowery statement, trying to clean it up. So you are who you are. You like the hot Cheetos. So if the hot Cheeto says he lives by what he says, you know. <laughs> and if and if he decides that he wants to say and talk reckless, he's or talking talk, about Trump when he talks yeah. about the hot shit. <laughs> talk, talk, talk crazy, then he, he he talks crazy, you know. And and we know where you stand. So so me trying to say, hey, you need to clean that up. That doesn't do anything. You want you want him to lie to us and act like he's somebody that he's not. Be who you are. Hey, well, you said it, brother. It is, it is what it is. 
and he's going to have to live with it. And, you know, hopefully he's successful in, uh, in, in his career. And this thing puts him in to an understanding of how big it is of what it is that he represents. And in that recognizing that he's an American hopeful and he represents the United States of America. And we have plenty of people already embarrassing America. So the last thing we need is another one. Right. Uh, last thing I want to just throw in real quick, and I'm not usually happy about this, but I'm very happy that someone was sentenced to 175 years in prison today. Mm. And it was Larry Nasser, this despicable, disgusting man who molested these 200 gymnasts, these 200 oh, girls when their parents were in the next room. That's crazy. And, That's crazy, and, right? And he had the so nerve crazy. to try to, to talk slick to the judge in a, in a letter <clears throat> To act like he was the one being victimized, right? I'm I mean, sick. this is this is just uh, I'm I I cannot believe the audacity of this guy, and that's why she felt great on giving it to him. And she, she told him, "I just signed your death warrant." And she said, "I'm honored and privileged to be able to give you this sentence," <laughs> and dropped that one seventy five on him like it was a, a ninety nine so, cent Big Mac meal, Jack. Geez. Not on top of him already getting sixty, and that's what he was complaining about. That's what he was talking slick about. Talking about, oh, yeah, I had the child porn, but I let other people use my computer. They never even proved that I looked at the child porn. And they gave me 60 years, and I didn't deserve that. I feel like a victim of the justice system. She okay. said, "She said I'm not going to read your whole letter. I'm just going to read the parts that particularly incensed me. She said, and I want to read this for everybody to hear, just to establish your thought pattern. She said some really poignant stuff. Yeah, if you said, get you time, you go no listen remorse. to it. Yeah, so she <laughs> said. She said, and you know what? You want to talk about you had a problem. She said, you know what? You're all about self-preservation. Because I believe if your problem was not pedophilia and your problem was cancer, you would have went and got help. You would have sought out help. But no. Instead, you decided that you wanted to continue to molest children. It's crazy, man. So it's some darkness out here in this yeah. world, folks. Yeah. Some really, it's some darkness out. Want to say thanks? To our guest, King Gabe Rosado. Gabe, tell the people where they can find you on social media. Yeah, man. King Gabe Rosado on Instagram and Twitter. And Twitter. Okay. We happy to have you, man. We can't wait to see the next fight. You let us know. And uh, we might be giving you a call to talk uh, Fly Eagles Fly if y'all pull up the dub. Or if if y'all get a 119-109. Oh, man. (laughs) I'm going to have to put my bet in half now. (laughs) (laughs) You got to walk in faith. You got to walk in faith. Yeah. yeah, yeah. (laughs) Straight up. So we're going to leave you with a quote. And that quote is, a tree is known by its fruit, a man by his deeds. A good deed is never lost. He who sows courtesy reaps friendship, and he who plants kindness gathers love. We're on this thing together, folks. I am your host, Omar Miller. This is The Ozone. Ozone. Ozone.